In this video, I'm going to show you how to open PDFs, especially of things that have been designed in InDesign, so that you can extract images and logos from them. So on my desktop, I have the PDF. So I'm going to drag the PDF file to the Illustrator icon. You could also right click on it and say open with Adobe Illustrator to make sure that it opens with that program and not my PDF viewer. In this window, you can choose which page you want to open. So in this theoretical scenario I'm in, I want to try to get a nice vector version of their logo. It's on the cover, so I'm going to choose page one. One of the things that you'll find in this process is what fonts they're using. So I'm not concerned with the fonts, so I'm just going to click close for now. And here's our object. So I'm going to use the direct selection tool, and that's going to help me click on individual pieces. So if I open the properties panel, I'll be able to see the fill color, for example. I'll be able to go to my character palette, and I'll be able to see the font and the size. Even if it's a missing font for you, it'll tell you the name. I can also select just the image. And with an image, you can see in my properties panel, I get this button that says unimbed. So I'll click unimbed and I'll give it a name and have it save as a PSD file on my desktop. And now if I go to my desktop, here I have a PSD file of just that image. So there's never any guarantee about resolution in these documents. It all depends on the native files and how they were prepared. But that's how you can unembed an image from a PDF design through Illustrator. So to get the, at the logo, it's going to be a bit more complicated. Depending on what piece you're going for, really the best way is to pop open your Layers panel and look for all of these. So this says Clipping Path, and they're usually in clip groups. So click on that layer so it's all blue, and then click the trash can. So what I usually do is I just kind of come through here, open things up, and I just delete all those clipping paths that I can. This is going to make it a bit easier. So this group here looks like the logo, so I'm going to turn it off and on. So yes, that is my logo. So I'm going to turn everything else off by clicking on one of those eyeball icons and dragging down. So now if I go to my selection tool, I can see I've got this frame with it, but also the logo. Anytime you're seeing this frame, that means you've got one of those clipping masks that you need to find and get rid of. Switch to your direct selection tool, and then I'm gonna drag a box around my logo. Then I can switch back to my selection tool and make it larger. So if I wanted to make this a logo that I could easily place in other documents myself, I'd make it about this big. And I'm going to note that the registration symbol is there, but it's white. So this was prepared to be on a colored background. So if I'm going to use it that way in my own design, I can go ahead and stick with this. If not, I'm going to want to switch back to my direct selection tool, so I tap the A key as a shortcut. I can drag and select just those pieces, head over to my swatches palette, just to make sure that everything there is white, and I could use my color palette to make that black. So fill goes to black, and now I can see that registration symbol. So the last thing I would do just to be tidy would be to switch to my artboard tool, and size that artboard to fit just the artwork. And then I can do a save as. Save it as an Illustrator file or an EPS file. And now I've got the logo by itself. So I'm going to hit undo until I get back to our original here. 
So a lot of times everything's going to come in with one clipping mask around the whole page. If you're having a hard time finding it in your layers panel, if you use your direct selection tool and click anywhere, it's probably going to show up with just one frame. That's that clipping mask. So if you select only a corner and hit delete, and this is OK, and then hit delete again, you'll get rid of that clipping mask. So now you have all your pieces separately, and you can forge ahead in taking apart what you need, figuring out what fonts are in there, what exact colors are in there, and you'll be ready to make your own design match the real one.